settle yourself down onto your back. Once you arrive there, please extend your legs down the mat. And moving from the center of your body, do a little shimmy side to side. Wiggle and rock the body. And then start to take some fuller breaths. I'm hearing the contents of my stomach. <laughs> it's not my favorite, but not the worst thing. Wiggle for just a couple more seconds here. Take a big breath in. And then exhale. Bring yourself to stillness. Bend the knees, heel toe the feet wide onto the mat, place your arms wherever they want to go, maybe wide, maybe overhead, maybe down by your sides and drop the knees from side to side. And if you're like, are you really going to just not explain why we just shook up our whole selves? I will a little bit. It's, um, it's a, a nervous system settling and distracting technique that invites it does some muscular distraction as well to just bring in some chaos to, to bring the body into a little bit more presence. Soften any habitual gripping or holding that's been occurring through the day. And kind of counterintuitively settle the nervous system by jostling it. Once the knees are to the left, keep them to the left and bring the right arm up and overhead. And now anchor more fully into your breath. Inhale, filling the belly, fill the chest and exhale, empty the chest, empty the belly. One more time, take your fullest breath in. And exhale, change sides. Knees now to the right, lower that right arm and bring the left arm up and overhead and settle it onto the earth. Full smooth breaths. Be present and attentive to not only each and every breath, but every moment along the way of each breath. Take the fullest breath of your whole life. And then exhale, bring the knees to center, lower the left arm. Draw the knees in towards your chest. Inhale fully here, fill the belly, fill the back. And exhale, bring the knees in closer as you empty the breath out. Place your feet down onto the mat. And then let's do a figure four stretch, starting with the left ankle on the right thigh. 
Your options include using the left hand to press the left thigh away or gather the right leg in closer towards you. And you might opt to, to start with the right foot down pressing option because we are just getting warmed up and into practice. So we don't need to go right away into our deepest, our deepest stretch here. Spend some time in one version of the shape and then if and when it becomes appealing to do something else, then do that other thing. As you spend more time in the shape, in the stretch, also anchor fully into your breathing practice. Inhale, filling the belly, then filling the chest. Exhale, emptying the chest, and then emptying the belly. Check in with your body. Is it now time to experiment with a different version of the shape? In some in some classes, it can be it can indicate that if you if you spend a good bit of time in something at the beginning of class, then you're going to really need to use it later on. I know sometimes that scares or intimidates me. I'm like, oh man, we're going to be really going into some deep hip hip openers. Um, please put your mind at rest if that's all a concern. We will be using the hips, but not in any sort of aggressive or um, uh, yeah, I guess not, not, in a, not in an aggressive way. Assertive, maybe. Take a full breath in. And a full breath out. Release the legs if you're holding onto them and drop the legs over to the right so that the legs are in a figure four and then the upper body is in a twist. Take the left arm out to the side, maybe up and overhead. In the figure four twist, you could choose to use this right hand now to press the top thigh away. That's an option. You could use your strength of the outer hip to reach the left knee down towards the bottom of your mat, or you could just stay in a more passive shape. If you are in a more passive shape, can you move more fully into that passivity by observing any gripping or holding that's going on and with your breath, invite that gripping or holding to release and relax. Inhale fully, belly, chest. And exhale, roll onto your back, bring the back of your pelvis onto the mat, and then unwind the legs and extend them down the mat. Give them a little wiggle out, little shake out. Rebend the knees. And now right ankle on top of left thigh options are the same as before, pressing the right thigh away or drawing the left leg in closer to you. Mm -hmm. 
make your breath the most dynamic part of what's going on here. Check in with the body. Is it time to engage with the shape any differently? So I know if I were to be taking this class from another teacher, I would be thinking, oh no, this figure four shape can only mean that we're gonna be spending like, you know, five minutes in that version of pigeon pose where then you bend the back knee and then you try to put the toes on the back of your head and you're wrapping your arms around this part and that part and, and that looks awesome. I love to see people doing that because it looks cool. However, it's not really where my own interests lie. Take a full breath in, please. Belly, then chest. And then exhale, drop the legs over to the left. Right arm out to the side, maybe overhead. options to use the hand to press the top thigh away, use your strength to pull it away, or really focus on softening in, noticing when the, grip and the gripping happens and relaxing it every time you notice it turn on. So likely you've noticed in your body as you're inviting things to soften, that'll take for a little bit of time. And then the body benefits from a little bit more encouraging and, and staying with it and just noticing whenever it happens to, to reinforce the habit, reinforce the skill. Inhale fully. And exhale, roll onto the back of your pelvis, unwind the legs, extend them down the mat, and give them a little bop and wiggle. Rebend the knees, and then make your way onto hands and knees. Pop that blanket under the kneecaps if you'd like. Hands and knees. Cat cow. Participate with the rounding and the doming shapes, but make the breath the primary reason that you're here. Hear your breath. Sense the breath inwardly. Either keep going with the cat-cow if you've really found a rhythm, really found a groove that you want to stay with, or make any other movements. Listen to the reality of your body as it's showing up in the moment. So every day we move our bodies in different ways, even if we, if we have similar routines day to day, 
Um, inevitably, there's, there's going to be difference in the way you move. And the body will bring with it a memory, a reflection of the movements that have been made in that day. Here's, here's the time to kind of catch up. Where has your body been so far today? Where would it like to be? What would it like to feel? Maybe there's a lot of movement. Maybe there's more stillness. Take a few more cycles of breath to do anything else that you like to do. Unwind from what the body has already done today or prepare it for what it has yet to do. Make your way to hands and knees. Knees under the hips, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Make some welcoming and exploratory movements in your down dog. Where you place the hands, where you place the feet are up to you. And the more options, the more variations that we try out for the body, the more information we gather, the more resilience we build. And then pause in your downward facing dog, pressing the hands firmly into the mat, reaching the sitting bones back behind you, reach the crown of the head in between the space between your hands. Knees can be bent any amount. And then do some shoulder circles here. So I'm not gonna narrate a whole lot about how these should be, what these should be like. Just take that instruction and do with it what it means to you. And then take your shoulder circles in the other direction. playing with little mobility exercises like this. Make sure that we are not cramming and jamming into the joints and staying stuck, but we have some freedom, some mobility, some range, some options. Pause in your downward facing dog. Step the feet wide onto your mat. Bend the knees and walk your hands in towards the feet. Drape the upper body over your legs. Take a few more rounds of breath here to soften into the forward fold, whatever that means for you right now. Gently curl the tailbone under, keep the arms and the hands heavy and soft, and roll up the spine. Once the head is up, inhale, reach the arms up. And then exhale, fold forward over your legs, knees bent any amount. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, lift halfway, fill the lungs. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway, reaching the crown of your head away from your tailbone. And exhale, fold forward, empty out. Press into the feet, spread the toes, reach the arms wide, and on an in-breath, stand all the way up, maybe bending into the knees just slightly. Exhale, hands to prayer. Move your blanket out of your way. And then step to the top of your mat with the feet under the hips. Spread the toes. Press down into all four corners of each foot. And then inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Step onto your right foot, and then step the left foot back, landing onto the ball of the foot. You can get your block involved to support your hands and your arms as you ease the hips down a little bit and lift the hips up a little bit. And then pivot the back heel down onto the mat and windmill up into warrior two. Turn the hands, palms up. Inhale, straighten the front knee, reach the arms up. Exhale, turn the palms face down, bend into the front knee, warrior two. Inhale, reach up, stand up. Exhale, palms down, deepen in. Do that a few more times. These don't need to be your deepest, most exaggerated warrior twos, but please do actively press the soles of the feet down into the floor. Inhale one more time, stand up. Exhale, warrior two. And then bring your hands to the hips, straighten the front knee, and wiggle the front foot in a little bit. You could step it, bounce it, however you wanna get there. But just bring the front foot in a little bit, narrowing the stance slightly. And then lift the heel of the front foot up. So you're standing on a Barbie foot and then, oh, aha, calf cramp, you too. And straighten the front knee, reach the arms up, take a breath in. And then exhale, deepen into your warrior two. Now with the narrower stance with the heel lifted. Listen to your body here. So this may be taking the knee farther over the ankle than it's used to going. So listen to your body. If it feels painful, if it feels unstable, then bend it less. If it feels fine, then embrace that bit of variety, changing the angles we're working with. And we've got the calf turned on and fired up so that it can do a little bit of, I guess you would call it counter breaking for us. Mm -hmm. 
One more time. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, warrior two. Place the heel down, hands to your hips, straighten the front knee, turn that foot forward, turn both feet forward so you're standing in a wide-legged stance. You could manually bring the block in here and make it available to yourself. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, fold forward. Maybe towards the floor, maybe towards the block. You decide how wide apart to place the feet. Stay in your wide leg forward bend and walk your hands to the left. So this could mean bringing the block into play and taking the block to the left with the hands there. It could mean keeping the hands on the floor. You could even take the hands towards that foot or leg, whatever feels best to you right now. Inhale fully into the right side of the body. And then exhale, walk the hands over to the left, bend the left knee. Maybe you bring the block back in to support the hands as you ease the hips down and then lift the hips up. Create a, a more generous stance with your feet. So if they are closer than hip distance apart, widen them to at least hip distance apart. Pivot the back heel down and then reverse cartwheel up, warrior two. Turn the palms to face up. Inhale, straighten the front knee, reach up. Exhale, turn the palms down towards the floor, bend the front knee. Inhale, rise. Exhale, deepen. Keep going. Once more, inhale, reach up. Exhale, warrior two. Pause. Hands to the hips. Straighten the front knee. Wiggle it in. Narrow the stance a little bit. And then lift. What is that? <laughs> the left heel up. Lift the left heel up. Bend the knee. Warrior two with a Barbie foot. Inhale, reach up. Straighten the front knee. And exhale, deepen in, bending the front knee. Take it as far over the ankle, over the foot, as feels appropriate. If the jaw is tightening, relax it.
One more time, inhale, reach up. Exhale, warrior two. Place the left heel down, hands to the hips, and then turn both toes, sets of toes, feet towards the side of your mat. Organize a wide leg stance, inhale, reach up. And then exhale, fold forward towards the floor or towards your block. Walk your hands towards the right. That can mean with the hands supported on the block, on the floor, towards a foot or a leg, your own. Choose whatever hand placement appeals to you and what's coming to mind is that what would appeal to me would be on some sort of float in some maybe cerulean blue waters. But I'm going to adjust my expectations and just focus on the kind of side stretch I want now. Take a full breath into the left side of the body. And then exhale, walk the hands further towards, towards the right, pivoting on the feet. Once you have arrived facing the top of your mat, step back to downward facing dog. Pedal out the feet here. Inhale, shift forward to high plank. And then slowly lower onto your belly with the knees up or the knees down. How slow can you go? Untuck the toes. Press the tops of the feet down. And inhale, reach the breastbone forward and up into cobra. Exhale, lower down. Do that a few more times. Come up and down from Cobra well, one more time. Knees down, bring yourself up, and then swing the legs out in front of you. If you would like some cushioning, some support, please open your blanket wider. Um, you could even open the blanket all the way up but make that your, your, working, your working base on which to place your legs. You know, like how when they recommend you're, uh, you're hammering it together some Ikea furniture or something, you want to put a blanket underneath, that, like that size blanket for that purpose. So uh, let's start first on both sitting bones with the knees bent, and then drop the knees from side to side.
either keep doing this a few more times if you would like to experiment with what it's like to do it upright. Bring the arms overhead, drop the legs side to side. You'll notice you're using a lot of different parts of the body now, a lot of core, and you're probably creeping yourself forward on your mat. Side to side one more time. I'll try not to wiggle myself out of frame. And then if you, uh, if you have traveled, bring yourself back onto your blanket, relax for a moment, and then bring yourself into a side sitting position. So I'm gonna leave that, I'm not gonna give you super precise instructions for exactly what angle to put what leg. Sit on one hip, knees bent, feet can be doing whatever, whatever angle in the knees is working best for you right now. And if you notice that you're really pitched over onto one side or the other, then you could support the hip. So usually if you are, if you're quite leaned over onto one hip, it's nice to elevate that sitting bone. But we are striving for progress and not perfection because we would never get there. So side sitting. We're gonna be here for a little bit of time. Uh, take breaks when you need to. I sometimes get kinda, get uh, a little cramped up <laughs> here and there. If that happens to you, take your time, get out of the pose, work it out, do whatever you gotta do, and then get back in. Option to use the hands to support yourself. All right, now that we've gotten all of our disclaimers out of the way, bring your awareness into what we will refer to, refer to here as your back leg. Um, so I guess to be specific, left leg in front, right leg in back, make the switch if you're not there. And then back leg, begin to press it down into the mat. So not just the side of the knee, but the entire leg, anywhere that's contacting a surface underneath, press it down and we're going to gradually increase the intensity of that contraction, the effort of that pressing for a count of 10. So let's start together, pressing down for one, two, three, four, dial it up, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, stay, hold, breathe. If you're cramping, address the cramp. I'm like right on the, on the verge of needing to kick this leg out, but not quite there. It's just telling me that I could use a little bit of extra strengthening work in this place. Probably also a little more hydration. We're still at 10, holding at 10. If you're wondering, yeah, okay, how are you gonna hydrate your like hip? That's where body work, fascial rolling, that kind of thing comes into place. Now begin to decrease the contraction voluntarily. So let's dial it down to nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ah! Let's do both legs at the same time now. So the same thing, anywhere that's contacting the floor, blanket, mat, whatever you got, press it down. One, two, three, four, let's speed it up a little bit, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, hold 10. Can you keep your neck and your shoulders relaxed as your legs could absolutely propel you into outer space? And then decrease effort, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, 
one, relax. Now, left leg, press it down. Not to any specific number, but just press it down so you've got a little bit of activation, little engagement there. Um, hands could be here just on the floor to support you wherever or not. Can you now lift the back leg up off of the floor? Maybe it goes somewhere, maybe it doesn't. Maybe you can lift the knee up. Can you also lift the heel and the foot up? Inhale, can you lift a little bit more and sit up straighter? And then exhale, place it down, relax. If you got any crampiness, work it out. Ooh, nice big hip pop. And then back leg, press it down a little bit. A little bit of activation, a little bit of stability. Can you lift the front leg up? I can't, can you? <laughs> but I sure am trying. Inhale, effort a little bit more. Can you lift the front leg up? And then exhale, release. Whew. Change sides. Swing the legs around. Now bend the right leg in front of you, left leg behind. Arrange yourself on a soft surface so you don't have any, uh, any bony bits contacting hardness. And now back leg, press it down, dial up the intensity, voluntary muscular contraction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 10, 10, stay at 10. Bring in some breaths. One more in breath at 10. And then start to gradually lower the intensity of your contraction. Eight, like there's not a nine, we'll just go to seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Let the leg relax for a moment. And then both legs, press them down everywhere that's making contact. Even if it's not making contact, can you imagine it's making contact and press it down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold here, inhale, and then exhale, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, relax. Bring in a gesture of stability by pressing the front leg slightly down. And can you lift the back leg up off of the floor? I mean, it, there's gonna be some leaning, right? <laughs> so don't be too, we need a win here. So if you gotta lean a little bit to, to get the leg up, do that. But then can you from there keep the leg up and bring the upper body a little bit more upright? Inhale, lift. And then exhale, set it down. Press the back leg down a little bit. Front leg, can you lift it up? Can you get the knee up? Can you get, uh, got a little, got a little lift over here. How are you doing? But then can you keep lifting and get the upper body more upright? Inhale, lift a little bit more effort towards lifting. And then exhale, lower it down. Relax. Bring the legs out in front of you. Well done. Well done to all the hips, all the parts of the hips, everything that just worked so hard. Well done. Shake out the legs. Give yourself a little break.
We're going to head now into a half hero's pose. Um, and we'll probably feel like full heroes for doing it because we're going to set ourselves up well. So get the blanket out of your way to show you what a, uh, just to give you an idea of what the shape is that we're heading towards, it is with one leg bent and the heel on the outside of that hip, and then one leg straight, sitting down, and then leaning back. If you're looking at me and you're like, <laughs> okay, um, this is just to get a sense for, for, for kind of what we're um, what it's going to be prioritizing. Stretch along the quadricep. Quadricep, there's no T at the end of that. So options include using a block. So you could bring the block on either the lowest height or the medium height. I wouldn't recommend this one because it's going to feel all jammed up on your sitting bones. But you could bring the block under your sitting bones. Let's start with the left leg bent and the right leg out in front of you. And then from here, walk yourself back, lean back. You could even bring a touch of a tilt, so a forward reach of the tailbone, looking for some stretch along the front of this quad. You can also do this in a couch. I think I'll be able to stay in frame. So if you have access to a couch nearby, bring yourself, perch yourself uh, to the front of it, and then if you have space under it, then bend the left knee and bring the foot underneath the sofa, and then from there lean back any amount. Maybe you reach the tailbone slightly forward. So find a situation that is going to work best for you. Get into the shape and take some full smooth breaths. Inhale fully. And then exhale, begin to bring yourself up and out. Extend both legs in front of you. Give the legs a little shake out. And then set up the second side. Organize the, the heel so that it's towards, towards that um, outer right hip. If you are on the couch, the same, the same applies. So just move, move the foot a little bit, a little bit more lateral. And then lean back any amount. Reaching the tailbone towards the ceiling will exaggerate this. Reaching the knee down towards the floor or the mat will exaggerate this. And if the knee feels unstable, pressing the top of the foot down into the floor will bring a little more stability in.
Inhale fully. And exhale, bring yourself up out of the pose. Wiggle the legs and then make your way onto your back. If you like a little bit more cushioning under your hip when you do when you do twists, the recline twist, then put a blanket under your hips, draw the knees in towards your chest, and drop the knees to the left, open the right arm out to the side. Take your fullest breath in all day. Exhale, change sides. Take the fullest breath in of your life. Exhale, roll onto your back. And then extend the legs long. If you're on a blanket, you can bring it out underneath of you. You could even repurpose the blanket, slide it under your head. And settle into your final relaxation pose if you found it helpful that little bit of shaking and shimmying that we did at the beginning of class to invite the body into rest then give it that little bit of shimmying and shaking from your center and then an, and an exhale invite yourself into stillness As you notice any bits of tension, gripping, holding, creeping in, whether it's in response to a sensation in your body or a thought in your mind, relax that tension, relax that gripping. And repeat as needed. begin to take some fuller breath.
hear your breaths. Sense the breaths inwardly. And then bend the knees and roll over onto your side and bring yourself up into a seat. Take your time. Make your hips heavier. And make the crown of your head lighter. Bring your hands together in front of your heart center and rub the hands together. Place one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. Bring to yourself an offering, a gesture of contentment. Thank you.